are ready to play here tonight. Number one, Ozzie Smith. Participating advertisers in Cubs baseball are Anheuser-Busch, Brewers of Bud Light, Toyota Motor Sales, and your local Toyota dealers, the friendly skies of United Airlines, your neighborhood True Value Hardware Store, Canon Cameras, Union 76, and your neighborhood Union dealer, Zenith by Telecast, is presented by the authority of the Chicago National League Ball Club, which has the right of approval of the announcers and is intended solely for the private, non-commercial use of our audience. Any publication, reproduction, retransmission, or other use of the pictures, descriptions, and accounts of this game without the express written consent of the Chicago National League Ball Club is prohibited. Now, there's lots of teams throughout this land, but I'm proud to be a Cubby fan. Believe me, 84 was just the start. We're going to bring a pennant to this park. Hey, I'm a Cub fan. I'm a Cub fan. And I'm a Bud man. I'm a Bud man. Ooh, happy. Holy cow. We went with a series before we threw. Cub fans, this Bud's for you. I'm a Bud man. I'm a Bud man. And I'm a Cub fan. I'm a Cub fan. I'm a Cub fan. Carry back in St. Louis to line up for the Cubs, Dernier in center. Sandberg in second, Matthews in left. Moreland in right, Say in third. Durham at first. Lake the catcher. Boa a chart. Sanderson the pitcher. For the Redbirds, Coleman in left, McGee in center, her at second. Clark at first, Van Slyke in right, Pendleton at third. Porter the catcher, Smith at chart, Tudor. The pitcher and his first pitch of the ball game is a wild one back to the screen. They're near hitting 251. The umpires tonight are Lanny Harris behind the plate, Randy Marsh at first, Charlie Williams at second, John McSherry at third. High pop foul back. The count is even up with a ball and a strike. During the month of June, Tudor was 6-0 with a 1.34 ERA. When he lost May 29th, he was 1-7. Then he detected a flaw in his motion. He corrected it, and he's won 12 of his last 13 decisions. Here's the pitch by Tudor. Five ball and a center field will be caught by Willie McGee. Wow. Steve Lake is catching. Jody Davis hasn't returned from his home in Georgia where his wife gave birth to their third child last night. Jeremy Williams. All their kids' names start with J. Jeremy, Jeremy Williams, who was born last night, 7 pounds, 15 ounces. But Joshua and also Jordan. Here's Sandberg. Strike over the outside corner. So the Davis families are, are the three J's, four if you call Jody. Jody, Jeremy, Josh, and Jordan. A ball and a strike to Cal, one out. The Mets have a good lead on Montreal. Phillies already won their game. Strike a curveball over the inside corner. One and two, Sandberg hitting 290 for the year with 15 homers and 39 runs batted in. Bouncing ball, he reached for it. Here's the peg, it's close! Out! Boy, that was a bang-bang play. Let's watch it again. Seems like there's always a bang-bang play when Ozzy plays shortstop. He doesn't have the strongest arm in the world. All he does is get the ball to first base just an eyelash ahead of the runner. Here you see it again, very close. Watch it from behind him. Umpire at first base is Randy Marsh. Ozzy says getting rid of the ball quickly is the key. 
I don't know. Here's Matthews, and the pitch is high. The next run he scores will be the 1,000th of his career. Gary Matthews hitting 226. Keeps the ball to the outside. You saw Sandberg reach, try to pull a pitch in the outside part of the plate, and hit a ground ball to the shortstop. There's a tap right back to the pitcher. Easy out. One, two, three. Tudor breezes through the first inning to the enjoyment of the Cardinal crowd as we go to the bottom of the first no score. Steve Stone, Harry Carey back at Bush Memorial Stadium in St. Louis as we go to the bottom of the first inning with no score. This is Scott's 18th start of the year, his second against the Cardinals. His last start was on August 1st. He threw against St. Louis in Wrigley Field, pitched seven innings, gave up eight hits and four runs. All of them were earned. He wasn't involved in a 9-8 Cub win. Vince Coleman will be leading it off. Hitting 269 with one homer and 20 RBI. You know, the cynicism of some people is just remarkable. How could you not give the commissioner of baseball, Peter Ubrov, as much credit as you possibly can give him? Coaching the what a contrast between first, his participation in the uh, strike talks and what happened with his predestined. Uh, the guy first, that was ahead first, of him. <laughs> the guy who preceded him. Here's Coleman up there. It looks like the commissioner just bumped a few heads together when he joined that group yesterday and made him work out a settlement. And it could very well be that they were afraid of his power in the best interest of baseball, each side thinking that maybe they may not come out as well if they let him make the decision. Here's the pitch to Coleman. And Scott Sanderson throws low. Ball one. I know personally I'm happy to give him all the credit in the world because it would seem to me that he was the cataclyst. One ball, no strikes. The speedy Coleman waiting. Line drive like a bullet. Holy cow. He's going to go all the way to third. He's around second. A leadoff triple. That ball was hit like a bullet. He just turns, opens up, and smacks this ball down into the right field corner. And after that, he just flies around the bases. It's going to go as a double and an error on Keith Moreland as he bobbles the ball. Nothing wrong with the legs of Vince Coleman. The two days off didn't hurt him. They call it a double and an error. Cole Moreland had to really hustle to get over there. Got his glove on the ball but couldn't hold it. And now here's Willie McGee. Scott Sanderson goes into the stretch. Fastball over the outside corner, strike call. If you're in this situation and you're on the mound, you've got to put the man at third out of your mind and concede the run and try to stop the big inning. If you worry about Coleman at third, you're liable to find McGee and her on base. Then you allow a three or four run inning. This way, you might get out with just one run. Now the pitch, here it is. A bouncing ball foul. Boy, they're ripping it, Sanderson. Coleman's triple was his 10th of the year. McGee has 13. He's up there now. He leads the league in triples with 13. He also leads the league in batting at 343. The Phillies beat these fellas here in this ballpark three out of four before the cessation, cessation of play. Bouncing ball foul outside first. And the count 0 and 2. Larry Bowen and Sandberg are both back. They're going to concede the run. The only way it won't score is a ball sliced right at Ron Say or a hard hit ball right at Leon Durham. Coleman playing it safe at third base. He'll score in any infield out unless it's right back to the pitcher. And even then he might score with his speed. Snap to the center. He's back. 
Steve Legg took a shot at him. And Coleman had to dive back. Pretty good idea by Steve Lake. It's a soft breaking ball. Figures as long as he's outside anyway, might as well fire to third. But Coleman, good heads up base runner. Now ready, Tommy Hur next. The delivery. Slow curve outside. That evens a count, two balls, two strikes. McGee will swing at that curveball if it's down in the dirt. He will expand his strike zone on low breaking pitches. Two balls, two strikes. Atlanta shut out San Francisco two to nothing. Phillies beat the Pirates seven to three. The Mets are leading at Montreal six to three in the third. Two two pitch. Foul tipped it. White Sox getting away to a three to nothing lead in the first. Beat the Red Sox in the first game of a doubleheader, seven to six. Their second game not yet underway. Two balls, two strikes. Tommy Hur on deck. <clears throat> Coleman a safe lead. Lined it foul into the right field corner. Two balls, two strikes. There's a danger of facing a club too close together in two starts. The last time he faced him was August 1st, and the Cardinals remember a lot of slow breaking balls. So tonight, Scott Sanderson has got various pattern. If he goes consistently with a slow breaking pitch, a lot of the Cardinals are going to be looking for it, and they're going to hurt him. I wish he wouldn't forget about his good fast breaking curveball. It's a very effective pitch for him. Two balls, two strikes. Sanderson delivers. Fouled it back. They're getting pretty good cuts up there. Coleman, you expect him to bounce the ball somewhere and beat it out. He really rifled one in the right field corner. He's on third, but nobody out. Willie McGee, a switch hitter, with 11 game-winning RBI. The 2-2 pitch. Sanderson getting ready for it. Struck! Kim out. No, he fouled it. He barely ticked the ball foul. Despite the fact that Willie McGee bats more frequently from the left side, as do all switch hitters, he strikes out much more from the right side. So from the left side, he's difficult to strike out. An amazing statistic about these speedy Cardinals. 14% of their hits they beat out on the infield. Sanderson doesn't have his good stuff. Are oh, the Cardinals are really reading, reading his pitch as well? RBI number 48 for Willie McGee, and he really battled Sanderson for that base hit. 130 of their 200 of their 906 hits. 130 of them they beat out on the infield. It's 14 percent. Here's Tommy Herr. Two hits in a row. Produced a run. Fastball in there. A strike call. Herr has been slumping lately. That average once up by Willie McGee's is now down to 313. His manager speculated that he might have been tiring and he wanted to rest him. But now with a couple days off for the strike, he figures he should be ready to go. curve inside. A ball and a strike. Cubs ought to be ready for this game. They've been at the ballpark for five, five hours. We got him from Chicago on the United Airlines charter. 
Got to the ballpark from the airport about 2.20 in the afternoon. And they've been here at the ballpark since. There goes a the runner. Swung on, fouled out of play. The hit and run was on. Jody Davis was due in here at 7. And he's probably en route to the ballpark right now. Willie McGee's stolen 41 bases. He's been thrown out 13 times. He's become a very good base runner. He always had the speed, but like most young players who come into the league, except for Vince Coleman, it takes him a while to learn how to steal second base on the major league level. One to nothing in favor of the Redbirds. Curves a little high. McGee faked a start, changed his mind. I think he was going to run, Harry, because they were guessing slow curveball with a one and two count, but he didn't get a good jump. Scott Sanderson took a long time to deliver the ball, and McGee couldn't read him. There's a drive down the left field line. It is a clear ball. Another run is going to score. Three hits in a row. A double for her down the left field line. RBI number 77 in Tommy Hurst's career year. And he slices this ball right inside the left field foul line. And there you can see how close it is. Willie McGee has no trouble scoring from first base. And the Cardinals are off to an early start. Sanderson has faced three men. Two doubles and a single. Two to nothing in favor of St. Louis. There's Jack Clark. Tommy Hurz, 24th double of the year, is career high. He's had career highs and RBIs and doubles. Sanderson. In 104 games, they've grounded in only 58 double plays. Vince Coleman and Willie McGee have hit in a one double play each. Now the pitch. Curve in there for a strike call. Jack Clark, the batter. There's a better first four hitters in baseball than the first four of the Cardinals. I don't know where they're at. These guys combine a lot of speed with some power and Jack Clark. They can hit extra base hits as well as our outstanding base runners. There's a high drive in the short left. Matthews under the ball will make the catch. Oh, he just didn't get that one. His swing was right there. He just happened to uppercut it a little bit. One out. Here's Andrew Van Slack. Well, Monday night, August the 26th, the Delavan JCs are going to celebrate a Delavan night in Peoria in the game between the Peoria Chiefs and the Springfield Cardinals. I mention it because Tom Bonacket is the chief of police in Delavan. Andy Van Slag, ooh. Go in and throw the ball. Boy, that's a way to hurt your back. Sanderson, time was called, and he was in the process of delivering, and he held the ball. That easy to jerk something in your back and that. That's a lesson for all you youngsters. Whenever you're going to deliver the ball, just deliver it anyway. If time's out, it really doesn't matter much. The only thing you can do is hurt yourself if you stop. It's a good way to have a leg or back injury, not to mention arm problems. Fastball outside. Tom Van Ocken, the chief of police at Delavan, will be throwing out the first ball. I imagine he'll throw it right at his brother Pete, who owns the Peoria Chiefs. One ball, no strikes. High outside. Two balls, no strikes. 
Last time the Cubs were in town, Andy Van Slyke really plugged the gap between the left fielder and the center fielder. He hit a couple of doubles into that left center field area. There's a pitch low. Ball three. Man, a tough first inning. something in her half he can drive got a fastball right there way back over the head of Keith Moreland and the Cubs are going to have to play catch up tonight There's still only one out here's Pendleton slow curve all one inside and that one out just missed going out of here Jack Clark just barely missed getting it four runs on four hits a happy Cardinal crowd here Thing. Harry, you got to move these guys off the plate. They're standing right up on the plate, taking great swings at Scott Sanderson. You can't continue to lay the ball in there. I don't advocate throwing at anybody, but you got to throw the ball inside to move them back a little bit. And thus far, nobody's come out to talk to Sanderson, and nobody's up in the bullpen. Slow curve in there, a strike call. Pendleton, the batter. Slow curve outside. Fastballs he's throwing just haven't had much on him. There's another drive. Deep right field. Way back. It might be. It is. Someone's finally running out to the bullpen. It's Warren Brewster. Here's Billy Connor coming out very slowly. To give somebody a chance to get warmed up. Warren Brewster sprinting from the uh, dugout down to the bullpen. He hasn't thrown a pitch yet. Well, it's going to take him a little while. Boy, I don't know when the last time I saw a pitcher hit this hard. Sometimes it happens with bloopers and bleeders, Harry. Tonight it was rockets. You could tell every left-hander was up there pulling everything down the right field line, even when they hit it foul. And you've got to adjust on the mound. You've got to keep the ball away from these guys. When your fastball isn't good and Sanderson's isn't good tonight, you can't keep throwing it over the inner portion of the plate. Billy Connors trots off the field now. <laughs> That's the first back-to-back -back homers for the Cardinals this year, and there's a happy Whitey Herzog. Here's the pitch to Porter now, and a strike is called over the outside corner. Did well wishes to Dennis Dulk and then Dota, Illinois. He tapped it foul. They're here from Albuquerque, New Mexico. The Miranda's friends of... Tito Landrum of the Cardinals. You're watching Chicago Cubs baseball over WGN Channel 9 Chicago. Well, immediately following the ball game, you'll see the news. Slow curve a little bit low. Warren Brewster down to the bullpen. Uh, 
outside another big slow curve. Whatever happened, a real good sharp curveball he used to have. I think Harry, when he hurt his back, he just stopped throwing it. He had a slider that he had good velocity at, but now he's going exclusively with the slow curveball and the fastball. When the fastball isn't a good one, there's not enough disparity between the two. He ripped at the fastball, pulled it foul. Elmer and Norma Well from Albuquerque, New Mexico. Yeah, that's, that's two groups here from Albuquerque. Darrell Porter hitting 273. Make that 173 with four homers and 11 RBI. High fly ball, deep left center going to be caught. Matthews. Porter flies to Matthews in left center. Here's the eighth man to come up. Ozzie Smith. Jim Fry doesn't want to go to his bullpen this early. He knows he's got a tough series coming up in New York starting tomorrow. And he'd like to get at least five or six out of his starter. Ozzie Smith hitting 259, four homers, 28 runs batted in. Boy, he was trying to jerk one out. Well, if he hits one out, it would be news from the left side, Harry, because he's got 11 career homers for this year, and all 11 have come from the right side. He just missed one here the last time we were in town. Owen won the count. Five to nothing in favor of the Cardinals. Slow curve in there. And it's 0-2. The Redbirds really have jumped on Sanderson. That made him get out of the way. He skipped the rope to get out of there. One and two the count. a nice catch. Five runs. Five hits. Four of them for extra bases. One error and nobody left. At the end of one, the Cardinals are leading five to nothing. Harry Carey back in St. Louis where the Cardinals jumped all over Scott Sanderson take a five to nothing lead we go to the second inning Keith Moreland will be leading it off the last time John Tudor faced the Cubs he shut them out on two hits that was June the 23rd he beat them seven to nothing here in St. Louis so the Cubs now have gone ten consecutive scoreless innings against them before the game, John Tudor said he's been very fortunate. His teammates have scored him a lot of runs. I don't think he even expected a first inning like the Cardinals provided this evening. Here's Moreland. The pitch is over the outside corner. Strike off. Get well wishes to our good friend Mickey Houston and Michael Reese Hospital. Convalescing there. There's a slow curve inside. Tudor is six feet tall, 185 pounds. Last year, he had a fine year with Pittsburgh, 12 and 11. But when you consider they were in last place, you'll know that he threw the ball very well, over 500 for a bad ball club. Now his pitch. There's a high fly ball, easy out. Coleman in left. One gone. And to bring him Ron Say with a 13-game hitting streak. Stars and Bob Speaker from Richmond, Illinois. Hey, here. Number 11, third baseman, family. Ron Say. One out, nobody on. Ron Say looking for his first RBI and first home run against the Cardinals this year. Fouls off the first pitch. Time running out on that Cubs cruise November the 14th to the 23rd. Operators are standing by to answer your questions. The number's 312 area code. 
Five nine one seven thousand. If you're interested. Slow curve and he missed it. Zero oh, and two. You could tell at the beginning, Tudor is throwing with a lot of confidence. He's throwing all of his pitches and he's taking something off all of his pitches and getting everything over the plate. He's got a good straight change and a slow curveball, and then occasionally he puts a little something on that curveball. Struck him out a curveball. Slow curve and say, looked at it. Five and all retired in the 13 game hitting streak. Number in 10, nine of the 13 games, say he had one hit. The other four, he had two hits. And that's why his average hasn't really climbed a whole lot, as much as you'd expect with a 13-game hitting streak. Here's Durham with two out. Sidearm fastball outside. It's good to see Leon back in the lineup, his back completely healthy. He says he feels pretty good. Two out, nobody on. There is a strike on the outside corner. Watch how Tudor pitches to Durham. He comes by way of first base to make him give ground. Strike after the. He only does that to left-handers, much like John Candelaria of Pittsburgh, Harry. As soon as a left-hander comes up, he begins to throw from the side. Candy does the same thing. Yeah. One and two. Fouled it back and out of play. The theory on pitching that way is there might be a lot of courage in the man's body, but a lot of coward ice in his front foot. He's got him set up here for that good breaking pitch that he'll throw from the side. He struck him out. Six in a row retired. We go to the bottom of the second five to nothing St. Louis. Chicago baseball fans get the opportunity to relive fond memories Saturday, August 17th as True Value Hardware and the Cubs bring you the 1985 Hall of Fame Classic. This year's Classic matches the Cubs All-Stars against the White Sox All-Stars in what promises to be an exciting afternoon of reminiscing and rivalry. The Cubs-Sox showdown features such former standouts as Santo, Hunley, Beckert, Kessinger, Cardinal, Jenkins, Melton, Klazuski, Minoso, and Karaskel, to name a few of the participants. This game is sure to delight fans of all ages. All of the action takes place prior to the Cubs-Phillies 120 game, Saturday, August 17th. Here's John Tudor, the pitcher to lead it off. <laughs> Here's the pitch by Sanderson. Swings. A high pop fly. Short center. Bobby Dernier calling for. Makes the catch. Tudor pop to Dernier. Greetings to Joe of United Airlines who helped the Cubs get off today at O'Hare. Here's Vince Coleman. <laughs> he started the first inning when he ripped one into the right field corner for a double advance to third on an excusable error by Orland and tried to feel the ball on the dead run and couldn't pick it up cleanly. One out, nobody on. There is a strike call. One strike and nothing. The Festa Taliana this year will be held at Olive Park in downtown Chicago, August 16, 17, and 18. Fastball a little bit inside. That evens a count, a ball and a strike. Lanny Harris behind the plate. Coleman only hit 257 last year in Triple A. The year before in Double A, he stole 145 bases. There's a pitch inside. So he's hitting better in the major leagues than he did in the minor leagues. Because he's hitting 271 right now. One out, nobody on. Five to nothing in favor of the Cardinals. Bouncing ball right to Durham. He's got it. Steps on the bag for the out. Boy, 
Coleman's been able to really pull Sanderson. That's the only way the National League has figured out how to stop Vince Coleman from stealing. Make sure he doesn't get on base. And he is pulling everything that Sanderson throws him tonight. The Cubs have lost three in a row here in St. Louis. And lost four out of six. Here is Say throwing the first in time. Willie McGee bounces out to say one, two, three, nothing across. At the end of two innings, five to nothing, St. Louis. You heard the news? What? Pee Wee Herman made his first movie. Nobody hit me to that, dude. Pee Wee's Big Adventure, rated PG, starts Friday, August 9th. Harry Carey back in St. Louis as we go in the top of the third here, Steve Lake. If he gets a fastball first pitch, he usually takes a pretty good cut. Lake batting 135. He swings and it's a fly ball to center easy out. Seven in a row retired by Tudor. The last time he faced the Cubs, he shut him out on a two hitter. They say they don't hit this guy very well is an understatement, but what you have to do to start getting base runners with a left-hand pitcher on the mound is maybe lay a few bunts down. Pendleton is a good offensive third baseman. He's not the best defensively. Here's the pitch to Larry Bow on the fastball is outside. Bow has raised his average to a more respectable 249 with no homers and 13 runs batted in. There's a fly ball and a short left field, and it's Coleman there waiting. Eight in a row retired by Tudor. Boy, so I'm on some of the entertainers on the Budweiser stage for the Festa Italiana the weekend of August 16, 17, and 18. Sergio Franchi, Julius La Rosa, Christine Corelli, Joyce Garrow, with fireworks on Friday and Saturday nights. Two out, nobody on. Sanderson the batter. That evens a count, a ball and a strike. Scott Sanderson went into this game with a good earned run average, 2.50. There's a strike on him. Last time he faced the Cardinals, he left the game leading 8-4. to four. At the end of seven, that's the game that the Cardinals tied up in the ninth, and it wasn't until the 14th that the Cubs won it. Sanderson goes down swinging. With Steve Stone, Harry Carey, back at Bush Memorial Stadium in St. Louis, Tommy Steve Herr will Second lead it basement. off. He Tom doubled Herr. in a run in that big first inning. Started with a double, went to third on an air, scored on Willie McGee's single to center. McGee scored on hers, doubled on the left field line. After Clark, Clark flied out, Van Slyke hit a 3 0 pitch for a two run homer, and Pendleton followed with another homer. Boy, they made five in a hurry. There's a curve in there, a strike call. And he's ahead of Tommy Hur now. 0 oh 2. Third, five to nothing, St. Louis. A little bit inside. Every time Montreal gets a little closer, they got to within 10 to 6. The Mets score a few more. They're now ahead 12 to 6 in the bottom of the fifth in Montreal. Broken bat dribbler to the second baseman. Sandberg over the first for the out. With the bat in his hand for a few strides. One out. Sanderson Third seems to have his rhythm now. He's retired six in a row, and now he's starting to make good pitches. When he throws the fastball inside, now it's on the inside corner instead of the inner half of the plate. The result, a broken bat instead of a line drive. Sanderson has given up 13 homers so far this year. Here's the pitch. A little bit outside. John Tudor has given up 11 himself. 
One out, nobody on. Jack Clark, the hitter. Sanderson takes a lot of time and Clark steps out of the batter's box. Clark hitting 293 for the year. 20 homers, 79 RBI. Curve over the outside corner. That evens it up. A ball and a strike. We're in the third. Side. Unlike the Mets, who have four power hitters in a row in Hernandez, Strawberry, Carter, and Foster, the Cardinals just have one, Jack Clark. But he has three rabbits ahead of him to get on base to set up the long ball. Two balls and a strike. Curve in there, a strike call. That evens it up, two and two. Toronto won again. They beat Baltimore seven to two. Boy, they are a hot ball club. Two balls, two strikes. A high pop fly on the infield. Leon Durham. Two gone. Van Slyke, who homered his first time up. He hit a three and nothing fastball. Just inside the right field line. Into the lower seats. And Slack hitting 259. Seven homers now. Thirty-two RBI. He has swiped 18 bases. One strike or nothing. Fastball wide at the knee. That evens it up. A ball and a strike. Everybody in the National League playing single games. Here's a curve outside. There are five doubleheaders in the American League, including the Boston and Chicago. The White Sox won the first game, seven to six. Second game hasn't started. Two out, nobody up. Move it outside. Ball three. Well, if they turned them loose on three and oh, you can bet they're going to turn them loose three and one. They did, but he popped it up. Larry Boa onto the ball. And that retires the side. That's eight in a row now, retired by Sanderson. Dwayne Stats will be joining Steve in a moment. Harry Carey in St. Louis. We're at the end of three. The Cardinals are leading the Cubs five to nothing. Steve Stone and Dwayne Stats to take you through the middle. A rough beginning for Scott Sanderson, but John Tudor's been perfect. Well, Tudor's been that kind of pitcher actually after that bad start. I guess the last couple months of the season, he's been about as perfect as a pitcher can be here for the Cardinals. This is the third straight game that the Cubs have seen the opposing pitcher throw a perfect three innings at him. It started with Dwight Gooden. Ed Lynch turned the trick the day before the strike. And now John Tudor has thrown three perfect innings as Bobby Dernier leads off the fourth. Dernier flying out to center field to lead off the game. He looks at one away, ball one. Fly ball left field, well hit. Willie McGee going back as is Vince Coleman, and Willie McGee runs it down. Cardinals have such great speed in the outfield, and McGee and Coleman can both afford to play a bit more shallow than ordinarily you'd see an outfielder because they go back so well especially Willie McGee McGee got back on that ball as Denier hit the ball about as far as he's going to hit one in that direction Sandberg grounded out to Ozzie Smith in the first 
Fly ball right center field. Also well hit. Andy Van Slyke makes the play. This is some outfield for the Cardinals. Spacious gaps in St. Louis. You know, Van Slyke is not the slowest man around. He can cover some ground out there in right field, but with a couple speedsters like Coleman and McGee, that carpet in the outfield is pretty well covered. That's one of the things John Tudor said makes a difference between last year at Pittsburgh and here in St. Louis. He's got some outfielders that can go get him. Gary Matthews. Looks at a breaking ball for a strike. He grounded back to Tudor in the first. Steve uh, Tudor is a smart pitcher, and that's one thing the Cardinals liked about him, even when he got down to that one and seven record. He started his career with Boston, spent five years there, went to Pittsburgh. That was for Mike Easler, and came over here for George Hendrick. And he said he didn't get down when he was one and seven because he felt he was throwing the ball well. And two. Sarge doesn't like the call as he looks back at Lanny Harris. Checks his swing. Count goes to two and two. Matthews with eight home runs and 22 RBIs. If you didn't know better, you'd think that Lanny Harris is one of the favorite umpires of the hitters and pitchers. They do so much talking with him, you know? Just a fine guy. Three and two. Lanny had some problems in Wrigley Field, but tonight he's getting no objections from the pitchers or hitters. He walked him, the first base runner. So 11 men in a row retired by Tudor until Gary Matthews breaks the spell. Keith Moreland flied out to left field in the second. Average at 290 coming in with eight home runs and 59 RBIs. He dropped to 289 with an 0 for 1. Cubs trail 5 to nothing. Moreland looks at a breaking ball down. Tudor said it was strictly mechanical at the beginning of the year. When he went 1 and 7, he said he picked up a flaw. He wasn't keeping his lead shoulder in. Whatever it is, he should tell the rest of the pitchers on the staff about it. 2 0. And he was the pitcher of the month in June and followed up with a great July. He's been a big part of the Cardinals' success over the past couple months. He's won 12 of his last 13 decisions. 3 0. So he runs into a streak of wildness. The Cubs trying to take advantage of it with Ron Say on deck. I think Moreland will be looking at this one, unlike Andy Van Slyke, who hit a 3-0 fastball out of the park. Things change when you're down by five. He looks at a strike. Outfield straight away and deep for Moreland. Who couldn't help but be distracted by all the union problems the last couple of weeks. High ball center field. Willie McGee roams under this one and he makes the catch. They get a base on balls and leave one into three and a half. Cardinals on top five to nothing. This part's for you for being on the job and working hard all day. So here's to you. There's no one else who does it quite the way you do For all you do This bird's for you This bird's for you Terry Pendleton to lead off the fourth inning for the Cardinals He'll be followed by Daryl Porter and Ozzie Smith Last year Pendleton hit 324 in two-thirds of a season with the Cardinals But this year the league adjusted to Terry. Terry didn't adjust to the league. And he's hitting just 227 right now. Breaking ball misses high. Pendleton hit a home run in the first inning. That ended the scoring for the Cardinals. One and one. Pendleton. 
Singleton was sidelined earlier this year with a pulled hamstring muscle. Put it on the shelf for a while, and Tom Lawless took over at third base. Easy to Sandberg, up with it on the hop, and fires across for out number one. Remind all Cub fans to be sure and stop by participating Union 76 stations to pick up your print of a great moment in Cubs baseball. This week, Cub hero Billy Williams is featured, so stop in today. Daryl Porter having a tough year. He came back off the disabled list. He had a broken finger, hitting just 172. Breaking ball misses. Flying out to left field in the first inning. Cardinals have not lost a home series this year. They're 6-0-1 in seven series. 2-0. They're going to lose this one, though, because this game concludes their home stand, and they were 1-3 against the Phillies. Popped up. Larry Boa going out. He calls for it. Matthews comes on, calls him off, and makes the catch. Matthews with a better angle coming in on the ball. Well, Boa off the play, and the Sarge made the catch. Here it is, Boa going out from shortstop. Now you see Boa laying off the ball as Matthews came tromping in and made the catch. Statistics don't bode well for the Cubs tonight. The Cardinals are 46 and 14 when they score first. They scored very heavily in the first inning, five runs on five hits. Sanderson has not allowed a hit after that first inning. My ball down the right field line. Leon Durham runs out of room. Steve, it's very interesting if you extend that statistic out to see what they are when they carry a lead into the eighth and ninth innings. You know, with Suter gone, everyone thought that the bullpen would be the big problem. But they're not losing many games when they lead in the seventh and eighth innings. I think they're 51 and 1 when they have the lead after seven innings and 53 and 0 when they're leading after eight. With Bruce Suter here at this time last year, they had 31 saves as a team. Right now they have 27, but they're spread around between five guys. Two and two. Retired by Sanderson since the home run by Pendleton in the first inning. Breaking ball tap foul. Herzog has made that committee bullpen go a long way. Not the first time he's had to do that. You know, he had a similar situation in Kansas City, pre Quisenberry over there. He says that everybody thinks that. He had Quisenberry all the time he was at Kansas City, and that wasn't the case. He had three or four guys he had to shuttle in and out of the bullpen. Now he's forced to do the same thing, and he said the biggest surprise, Ken Daly this year. Full count on Smith. And the emergence of Daly along with Lottie has really given him a big lift in that bullpen. Popped up. Steve Lake coming back. And he makes a great catch. Nice play by Lake. And that retires the side. One, two, three. At the end of four, Cardinals on top, five to nothing. If you missed the announcement earlier, catcher Jody Davis' wife, Pam, gave birth Wednesday to their third child, Jeremy William. Jeremy weighed seven pounds, 15 ounces. The Davises have two other children. One of their other children was born during the last strike in 1981, so it appears that Pam has some time off till the projected next, next strike in 1990. Take another look at Steve Lake's play. As Steve got a chance to do a little catching tonight. Jody a little late in getting back to the ball club, and Lake made a heck of a catch on that pop foul off the bat of Ozzie Smith. I want to send along a big hello from the WGN crew to Jack Laird in the Palos Heights Community Hospital. Hope that everything is going along extremely well. Ron Say to lead off the fifth inning. He struck out looking in the second. One of three Tudor strikeouts to go with one walk. John hasn't permitted a hit through four. Ron Say trying to protect a 13-game hitting streak and Warren Brewster up and throwing in the pen. 
the short. You can pretty much take a right turn when Ozzie gets a ground ball. That's exactly what Ron Say is going to do. One out. Ozzie's only made six errors this year, and he's threatening Larry Boa's record for National League shortstops, nine errors in an entire season. Saying to get to as many balls and to be involved in as many plays as Ozzy Smith is, that's an incredible statistic. Just six errors this late into the season. That's how you become a $2 million, 240 hitter. Sweeping curveball wide. Leon struck out swinging in the second. It's good to see him back in the lineup after a slight back problem. And one. Jim Fry had a meeting before the game. He expressed displeasure to the club on a number of things. Figures they got 58 left and they've got to bear down. Two and one. Fry said he needs a hundred percent performance out of everyone for the last 58 games to climb back in this pennant race. Good swing, two and two. New York on top of Cleveland, three to nothing in the second. Milwaukee, six to four over Texas in the ninth. Kansas City, one, losing one to nothing to Detroit in the second. Fouled off. Minnesota up four to one over California in the fourth. Now Jim has a tough time saying that. This particular game, or maybe the uh, weekend against the Mets, that series is necessarily a do or die game or series. First base hit of the night for Leon Durham. Just past the outstretched glove of Jack Clark. So the only left hander that John Tudor is going to face breaks up the no hitter. Here's a look at the 2 2 pitch. Breaking ball out over the play a little bit. A bouncing ball through the right side out of the reach of Jack Clark. Jim Fry has a difficult time pinpointing saying this is the game that's going to make it or break it or this weekend series. But he knows that if the Cubs are going to make a move they're going to have to do it very soon. Steve Lake. Fouls back the first pitch. He flied out to center field in the third. Leon Durham aboard with one out. Infield about halfway, double play depth. Pendleton deep and wide of third. Crowds him one and one. Good fastball away. Tudor said when he was with the Boston Red Sox, he felt he tried to pitch inside too much. That's a common problem of left-handers at Fenway Park. They throw away away, so they made him conscious of the inside fastball. He said he lost the outside corner of the plate. Couldn't throw anything away to right-hand hitters. He said in Pittsburgh, last year, he finally got a good command of the outside corner. Now he feels he can move the ball around, and he thinks his control the best of his career at this point. And he's in a perfect park to pitch that way right here in St. Louis. Big hopper to third. Tough play for Pendleton. Long throw and he gets him. Good play by Terry Pendleton. He was forced to back up and still made the strong throw. The fact that he had a catcher Steve Lake going down the line and as you know catchers don't necessarily run that well. Gave Pendleton the time he needed to come up with that ball and make a long throw. Here's a good throw by Pendleton, and he got leg by Punty at first. He shows a very strong arm. Anytime you have to back up and still make that long throw, you've got a good one. Larry Boa looks at a good fastball over the inside corner. Boa flied out to left field in the third. Leon Durham in scoring position. The Cubs trying to put one on the board. They trail five to nothing. Gary Woods on deck. He'll pinch hit for Scott Sanderson if Boa can keep it alive. Ozzy Smith sneaking in back of the bull. Thirty-nine thousand two hundred and three paid here tonight. Fly 
fly ball center field. Willie McGee on the run, and he makes the catch. The Cubs get a hit. They leave one. End of four and a half. The Cardinals on top, five to nothing. Steve Stone, Dwayne Stance, and Arnie Harris, the producer-director, taking you through the middle here in St. Louis. John Tudor to lead off the fifth inning for the Cardinals. And he looks at one down and in. Tudor, eight for 60 this year, hitting 133, and he drives the ball deep. Back goes Keith Moreland. He's going back to the wall. He can't get the ball. It's off the wall. John Tudor in at second. He's coming to third. He's going to be in with a triple. First Cardinal hit since the first inning. Sanderson laid a fastball in there, and Tudor turned it on him, just about hit it out of the ballpark to the base of the wall in right center field. After 11 men retired in a row, John Tudor breaks out of it in a big way with a long triple. That's got to be the hardest hit ball of his career. He scalded that one. Maybe he'll get tired from running the bases and he had to go all the way to third. Vince Coleman, one for two, doubled and scored a run in the first. Tap to Leon Durham in the second. Infield in at all four positions. Soft breaking ball misses. The Cardinals back to back home runs in the first inning off the bats of Van Slyke and Pendleton for the first time they've been able to do that in this ballpark since September 4th of 1983. Bob Forsh and Lonnie Smith. Almost two years. And getting some good swings at Sanderson tonight. Sanderson six and five with a 387 earned run average lifetime against the Cardinals, making his 20th appearance lifetime against St. Louis. Not one of his better efforts. He's thrown the ball very well this year, but tonight he doesn't seem to have his good stuff. Although after the first inning, he seemed to get his rhythm. Nobody up in the bullpen for the Cubs. Nice play by Steve Lake. That saved a run. Vince Coleman had to skip the rope to get out of the way of that soft curveball. We've seen a lot of breaking stuff out of Sanderson tonight. A lot of off-speed stuff. Look at this save here by Steve Lake. He's had a tough time getting anything extra on that fastball and has gone to the breaking stuff and hasn't had real good command of it either. Coleman has 28 infield hits this year. Good fastball, two and two. Willie McGee leads the team with 31 infield hits. 24% of all of McGee's hits have been on the infield and 27% of all Coleman's hits have been on the infield. Those are amazing numbers, aren't they? That's what speed can do for you. Makes a 230 hitter, a 270 hitter. Fly ball right field, base hit. That's going to score the sixth Cardinal run. Two for three for Vince Coleman. It's Coleman on this pitch. Breaking ball started down, and Coleman able to wait long enough and then just punch it into right field. Warren Brewster up once again. RBI number 21 for Coleman. Willie McGee one for two with an RBI to run his total of 48. There he goes. He couldn't get a good jump. Steve Lake delivered the ball in a hurry, and Coleman decided to go back to first base. Wise choice by Vince Coleman. He'd have been out from here to Wood River. There he is, as he did not get a very good break. So he decided to put on the brakes here, and meanwhile, Lake unloaded a strike to second base. One and no count on McGee. There he goes. Throw to second. Not in time. Lake had a tough pitch to handle here. He tried to get rid of the ball as quickly as he could. 
But in his haste, the throw was not that good. Just a tough pitch to try to throw anybody out on, much less Coleman. Here's Vince Coleman isolated now. He could have stolen Wood River on that pitch, Steve. Lake couldn't come over the top on his throw. 2-0 and count, and there's the pickoff at second. And he's in under the tag. He completely fooled Coleman. Scott Sanderson making the reverse pivot. Couldn't get the ball there quickly enough. He makes things happen on those bases. I'll say that for him. That's an exciting base runner. He looks like he had some designs on third base. Well, he's been very successful stealing third. He's 21 out of 25 in that department this year. 75 stolen bases for Coleman this year. You realize he's stolen third base more times than most players steal any base throughout the whole year. away and McGee doesn't get time out so Sanderson throws a strike and that's a lesson for all you youngsters don't just step out of the box make sure the umpire acknowledges the time out that time Willie McGee didn't get the acknowledgement from Lanny Harris and it cost him a strike it almost seems automatic but it's not have only grounded into 58 double plays all year and that's the lowest in the National League. And you've got a lot of switch hitters who can run. It's tough to double them up from the left side. Bye bye base hit. Here comes Vince Coleman. No play. The seventh Cardinal run. And that's going to be it for Scott Sanderson as Jim Fry is taking the long slow walk and he's motioned in Warren Brewster. Another fastball and Sanderson just does not have the kind of fastball tonight that enables him to challenge anybody. We'll be back with more after these messages. Scott Sanderson leaves the game. Warren Brewster enters the game. And what do you have on him, Dwayne? Making his 36th appearance. Brewster's 2 and 1 with an earned run average of 489. He has four saves to go with the two victories. Giving up a few more hits than innings pitch. 53 and a third innings, 56 hits, 27 strikeouts, and 25 bases on balls. Boy, how the game has changed, Dwayne. Back in 1906, when you were growing up in Wood River. And you were just breaking in. I remember going to the ballpark and watching you play. Well, John McGraw was a manager in those days. And he decided to lock James Johnson, an umpire, out of the ballpark. They were playing the Cubs. It was on this date. And so the Cubs won a 9 to nothing forfeit over the New York Giants. And I guess if you don't like a guy's umpiring, the best way to deal with that is just make sure he can't get in the park. If he can't get in, he can't kick you out, is the thinking there. And that's what happened. So John McGraw absorbed a 9 to nothing defeat, but he didn't have to look at any bad calls that day. You're watching Chicago Cubs baseball over WGN-TV Channel 9 Chicago, America's number one sports station. Base hit, right field. Willie McGee on his way to third. Tommy Herr has his second base hit. So in the first inning, the Cardinals had a double, a single, and a double out of Coleman, McGee, and Herr. And in the fifth inning, they've had a triple and three singles out of Tudor, Coleman, McGee, and Herr. Seven runs on nine hits and no errors for the Cardinals. No runs, one hit, and an error for the Cubs. And the bullpen is busy once again with Larry Sorensen. I'll tell you, a combination of this AstroTurf and the first three hitters in the Cardinal lineup hitting down on the ball makes life very difficult for even sinker ball pitchers. And the ball really skips through the infield. Good swing by Clark. No contact. Clark's 0 for 2. 
Clark Porter and Ozzie Smith. The three Cardinals with no base hits tonight. Then you have to face this guy and if you get the ball up you're really in trouble. Brewster looking for the double play. Fouled off. 0 and 2. Buck with 20 home runs and 79 RBIs. McGee has 49 RBIs. Her has 77. Clark has 79. Not bad for two, three, and four. Andy Van Slyke on deck. Fly ball right field. That's going to score Willie McGee easily. Tommy Her halfway. Cardinals on top. Eight to nothing. Sacrifice fly for Jack Clark. RBI number 80. It is the pitch off the plate a little bit. And Clark knew he could get the fly ball out of that. Moreland in a position to throw, but he had no chance to get the speedy Willie McGee. That run charged to Scott Sanderson, by the way. That'll close the book on Sanderson. Four plus innings, eight runs, eight hits. Van Slyke one for two with a home run and two RBIs. He looks at one down. Ball one. Cardinals 33 and 16 at home. 2 and 0. Oh. You can understand how they can dominate the opposition here. Their speed really shows up on the AstroTurf. And their first three hitters don't hit a lot of fly balls. They chop down on the ball, as you mentioned before, Dwayne. Little men who don't hit home runs have got to hit line drives and ground balls. That's the percentage. Two and one. You know, that's a great lesson, and it's so simple. You know, the difference between a 250 hitter and a 300 hitter in this game is one hit a week. So if you have great speed and you chop down on the ball, well, I think uh, Coleman and McGee are prime examples. They're going to have great careers in the major leagues because of that. Pushes him back at first. Willie McGee leading the league. McGee and Coleman have hit into only one double play each this year. Line drive, center field. Bobby Dernier coming on, and he makes the catch. Two outs in the fifth inning. It's been all Cardinals, eight to nothing. Pendleton hit a home run in the first, his fourth of the year, his 41st RBI. Grounded easily to Sandberg in the fourth. Popped up. Larry Boa going back, calls for it, and makes the catch. But a good inning for the Cardinals. They get three runs on four hits. They leave one. End of five full innings. Cardinals on top, eight to nothing. are killing Montreal 13 to 7 in the sixth inning. Philadelphia beat Pittsburgh 7 to 3. Atlanta beat San Francisco 2 to nothing. And here in St. Louis, John Tudor is sailing right along. He had some pretty decent years with the Red Sox. 1982 he was 13 and 10. 1983 he was 13 and 12. Couple that with last year's 12 and 11 record with Pittsburgh. And you'll see a pretty steady pitcher. Three years in a row with double figures and wins. 13 and 8 this year coming into tonight. Gary Woods pinch hitting for Warren Brewster. That'll bring Larry Sorensen in the game. One hit by the Cubs, that by Leon Durham. One and one. You know, Tudor's picked up right where he left off when he beat the Cubs back during the end of June. He allowed just two hits in the nine innings and defeated the Cubs seven and up. And two drops a good breaking pitch right over the heart of the plate. Gary Woods hitting 210 this year. No homers, only one RBI. Two and 
two. Cubs have had some pretty good left-handed pinch hitting in Thad Bosley and Richie Hebner. Bosley leads the league with 12 pinch hits. Hebner has 11, but from the right side, they haven't been as successful. Broke his bat. Easy to Pendleton. Over to first. And Gary Woods is out number one. New York Montreal game. Foster and Carter of each homer to the Mets. So the Mets continue to swing some hot bats. One of the keys for the Cubs year starts missed by their starting pitchers. Seven for Trout, six for Sutcliffe, six for Sanderson, four for Eckersley. A total of 23 starts missed by the big four. It's one of the reasons why they find themselves as far back as the Mets as they are. Baked as if to bunt and took a strike. Bobby Dernier has flied out twice to Willie McGee in center. Sandberg on deck. One and one. Cubs called up Billy Hatcher today. They sent down Dave Gumper. Gumper threw the ball pretty well in his two appearances. And two took a little something off the fastball and they're near out front. He looks like a master craftsman on the mound tonight, much like Tommy John used to look when he was throwing the ball very well. Good command, he has good control, good placement with his pitches. Right back at him, easy play for Tudor. Two up, two down. After pitching at Fenway and then spending that one year in Pittsburgh, coming to this ballpark and having a good feel for pitching away is a great combination for John Tudor. Having good outfield, a couple of fellows who can go get the ball doesn't hurt either. Sandberg fouls it off. Tudor said he looks in back of him and sees the three speedsters in the outfield and gets a feeling of comfort knowing that he can make a mistake and Willie McGee. Vince Coleman or Andy Van Slyke is going to run it down. Fly ball left field. Easy play for Vince Coleman. And that's it for the Cubs. Three up and three down. Tudor is making it look easy. End of five and a half. Cardinals on top eight to nothing. Larry Sorensen is going to be the third Cub pitcher of the evening. And Dwayne, what do you have on him? Sorensen three and two with an earned run average of just over five, 5.02. Larry's making his 27th appearance, 26th out of the bullpen. 48 innings allowed in 43 innings, 21 strikeouts and 16 walks. Cardinals throwing eight left-hand hitters at the Cubs today. Daryl Porter flying out to left field twice. Line drive. Leon Durham has it on a hop and then he beats him to the bag. Nice play by the ball. The probables for the Mets series are Ron Darling at 10 and 4 versus Dennis Eckersley 8 and 5. Dwight Gooden's going to throw Saturday 17 and 3 versus Ray Fondo at 4 and 6. And Ed Lynch is going to throw Sunday at 9 and 5 against Dick Ruthven at 4 and 7. Three pretty good pitchers for the Mets. Should be a tough series in New York. The Mets have been red hot and they're going to be up for this one. Ozzie Smith is 0 for 2 and he looks at a fastball for a strike. Fouled off. 0 and 2. Mets have started to score runs in bunches as Montreal is finding out today. 13 runs for New York this afternoon. This evening, excuse me. Let's continue to roll along. Sorensen tries a knuckleball. It goes wide. One and two. One of the few knuckleballs that we've seen lately out of Larry Sorensen. He pretty much shelled that pitch. Fouled off. John Tudor on deck. He has proven tonight that he can swing a pretty good bat as well as throw some good off-speed pitches over the plate. 
Kelsey having a very good year for him at 258. Much like Larry Boa, a much better hitter from the right side. He's got some power from that side. He's hit four home runs this year. Two and two. Toronto beat Baltimore seven to two. They lead. Well, they took him a doubleheader, seven to four in the second game. Tapped easily to Sandberg. Smith is out number two. White Sox beat Boston seven to six in the first game. They're tied up one one in the third in the second game. Kansas City beat Detroit ten to three. Yankees beat the Indians eight to one. And a big hand for John Tudor. He's won three in a row after winning nine in a row earlier. Fouled off. Tudor one for two. Tripled and scored a run in the fifth inning. Scott Sanderson started through four plus innings. Eight runs on eight hits. One and one. One and two. Good sinking fastball by Sorensen. Now yeah, Sorensen keeping the fastball in on Tudor. He's pitching him with a little respect this time up. Right to Ron Say. That's it for the Cardinals. Harry will be rejoining me for the seventh, eighth, and ninth inning. Dwayne, it's been a tough one tonight. Certainly has been something other than a pleasure, wouldn't you say? End of six. It's been all Cardinals, eight to nothing. Memorial Stadium in St. Louis, where it's all Cardinals so far tonight. They're leading eight to nothing. And one thing must be said: nothing cheap about their hits. They really creamed them. Leading off, left fielder Tommy Glab and Danielle Ricci from Chicago. Watching the game. And a lot of other Cub fans, but so far nothing to cheer about. Matthews swings and he misses. The Cubs have had only one hit. They've had only two base runners. A single by Durham and a walk to Matthews. Slow curve outside. Bobby Miller from Galesburg, Illinois. And the Campbells from Pensacola. to check his swing foul tip the pitch he hasn't thrown the fastball the same speed twice he just keeps putting something on taking a little bit off he's completely fooled the Cubs tonight they haven't been able to time him at all last time either Steve here's the pitch high last time he faced him June 23rd he allowed two hits and shut him out seven to nothing Two balls, two strikes. Sliced at foul. The Mets are leading Montreal 14 to 7 in the eighth inning. Boy, those Mets are hot. And the Cubs will face them in New York tomorrow night. Foul back. Not only the Mets, but Dwight Gooden, their great right hander, will be on the air. It's going to be Darling tomorrow night, then Gooden Saturday. Here's the pitch. Ground ball to the third baseman. Easy out. You see the tentative swing? This pitch has completely fooled him, John Tudor. That's because he took something off again. Matthews right, thought it was a fastball till the last instant. Then he had to slow down the bat in his hands and couldn't get anything on the swing. The Pleasants are here from Hernando, Mississippi. Well, that's Hernando's hideaway. You remember that, I know. <laughs> the song was before my time, but... <laughs> Here's the pitch, and it's in there. A little bit too far inside. Darling against Eckersley tomorrow night at Chase Stadium. 
Gooden against Fontenot Saturday afternoon. Lynch versus Roof Roof on Sunday. There is a strike call to Moreland. He's 0 for 2. One out. John Tudor has also contributed a long triple to his night's work. Fastball high. Would have been real easy for John Tudor to pack up this year when he was 1 and 7. He went out there with a good attitude. He felt he was throwing the ball well, as did Whitey Herzog. And since then, he's been close to untouchable. There's a strike call. Two and two. Two balls, two strikes. Right down the middle of the strike call. Moreland called out on strikes. That's his fourth strikeout. Boy, he has been almost perfect. Third baseman, Ron Say. Arnie's checking the weather reports, Harry, and it appears that a week from today you're going to be back in the bleachers because he thinks there's a storm coming. <laughs> yeah, whenever he schedules us in the bleachers, it rains. A week from today we'll be out there in the center field stand. Say had a swing and he missed. He's going to take good care. He's going to put us under the scoreboard so rain or shine will be all right. Oh, and one the count. Round ball to the third baseman. Pendleton has it. Over to first. He's the out. Boy, what ridiculous ease with which John Tudor is pitched. We go to the bottom of the seventh. Eight to nothing, St. Louis. back in St. Louis as we go on to the bottom of the seven. Greetings to a great Cub fan, Albert Trott, who's a meter reader for CIPS in Paris, Illinois. A longtime Cub fan, Jody Davis is his favorite player. Jody's arrived on the scene, and he'll probably be in the ball game before too much longer. Lottie and Campbell in the bullpen for the Cardinals. They're just getting a workout after two days of inactivity. Here we go with Coleman. He's two out of three. Two runs scored. A stolen base and a run batted in. The top of that batting order, the first three men. Each with two out of three. Each with at least one run batted in. There's a fastball low. John Tudor has got five shutouts already this year. That ties him for the National League lead, and he's bidding for number six here tonight. Bouncing ball. Sandberg throws him out. What a speed of Coleman. Almost rushed Sandberg into a wide throw. He knows he has to get rid of it in a hurry, and Sandberg comes in. He's anticipating the high hop. Watch him go up with this ball. And hurry his throw and almost pull Leon off the bag. Watch it again. Here's Willie McGee. One on, nobody on. Birthday greetings to Lyle Mitchell in Clearwater, Florida. Swung and he missed. I got a stepson playing down there for the Clearwater team in the Florida State League, Roger Johnson. A ball and a strike. He had a cut. Well, Willie McGee. I think he lulls you into a false sense of security. Takes a weak swing every so often. And then boom on the next pitch. Two balls, two strikes to count. And the three members of the Moore Oklahoma Peppers. That's a championship girls slow pitch softball team. Top 
picked it foul. Tomorrow night from Shea Stadium. Boy, you see where that Tom Filer, who used to be with the Cubs, won again for Toronto tonight. He's 4-0. Oh. Toronto swept a doubleheader from your old team. Baltimore. Earl Weaver probably wishes he had not succumbed to the temptation of the filthy lucre. 2-2 pitch. Found it on a play. Filthy lucre, huh? A little high-class literature for you. Well, I know one thing. He gave up seven runs in both games against Toronto, and he's finding out, Harry, that even if you are an acclaimed genius, and Earl is a fine manager, if you don't have pitching, you're not going to win. That pitching of his is getting awfully old. There's a pitch low, ball three. There's some gals, Patty, Sue, and Sharon from Schaumburg. Disappointed to score, no doubt. He struck him out. Took something off on the pitch. You know, I was so sad to hear about it. I, I really, I found it difficult to mention what must be mentioned. Though a wonderful lady passed away today, Marge Meyer, the beautiful and gracious wife of the coach, Ray Meyer. I, I didn't know she was ill. Arnie, did you? The mass will be at St. Vincent de Paul Church tomorrow. There's a ground ball hit. The ball who throws quickly for the out. One, two, three, nothing across. At the end of seven, the Cardinals are leading eight to nothing. Warner Brothers is proud to present the story of a rebel. Morning. I'm here. And his bike. James Bond kind of stuff. Stop that nun! Together for the first time. In their first big movie. What? What? Pee Wee Herman is Pee Wee Herman in Pee Wee's Big Adventure. Rated PG. Starts Friday at a select theater near you. Check newspapers for listings. Harry Carey back at Bush Memorial Stadium. We're going to the top of the eighth. It's all Cardinals. Eight to nothing. Marge Meyer, the wife of the coach, Ray, passed away today. The mass will be at St. Vincent Leon, de Paul Church baseman, Saturday. The funeral will be at All Saints Cemetery in Des Plaines. My sympathy and condolences certainly go to Ray and Joey and all the other Myers. What a lovely lady she was. Pitch fouled out of play. Durham was had the only hit. There'd be a little mass hysteria had it not been for that one hit. Tudor. Pitched a one-hitter during his career in the American League against Toronto, I believe it was. He pitched a two-hitter against the Cubs June 23rd this year. Two balls and a strike on Durham. And he's got a one-hit shutout. He's going for his sixth shutout of the year. hit of the ball game in case you're tuning in late. And he had a count of two and two. He just trickled it by Jack Clark. George Fraser up in the pen for the Cubs. Strong came up. Boy, oh boy. That's his fifth strikeout. He's allowed only two base runners. There's Steve Lake. Jim Fry told the club before the game, Harry, but maybe he'll forget about it. 
This, this club looks dead flat. I guess you always do when you don't get any hits. But what happened to all those hitters? A year ago, they, they led in all the offensive columns. Just as the Cardinals are doing this year. What difference a year can make? Like a snowball rolling downhill. Once you get the momentum, it keeps on going. One guy, two guys start to hit. Everybody hits this year. No momentum. There's a pitch, a high pop fly. Short center, Willie McGee. Do you know there hasn't been one ball hit hard? Even Durham's hit. Just a dribbler that just got by Jack Clark. Jody Davis. Jody Davis is going to hit for Boa. So our good friend, Mr. Trot from Paris, Illinois, will see his favorite player right here. Fastball outside. Jody's average down to 232, 10 home runs and 42 RBIs. Right in there. Counting up a ball and a strike. Ray and Lorraine Salata from Senatobia, Mississippi are here. Got to be a favorite time. Strike called. One and two the count. Chris Fire on deck. He'll come in to hit for Larry Sorensen if Jody can keep it alive. That evens the count two and two. Mets are leading 14 to 7 in Montreal. Two-two pit. Woo! Just missed low. Montreal goes for two after the next touchdown. They've got a shot. Three and two. The count. Fouled it out of play. Oh, there's so many Cardinal fans. Here and so many Cub fans here. The Cardinal fans are ecstatic. The Cub fans, not so. He struck him. Oh, he's getting stronger. We go to the bottom of the eighth. Eight to nothing in favor of the Cardinals. Steve Stone, Harry Carey, back in St. Louis. Jack Clark's going to be leading it off. You know, Steve, after two days off, you'd think you'd see a ball club really bouncing all over the place, invigorated. I've never seen the Cubs look so dead in my life, and I go back a long time with them, as you do. I think maybe manager Jim Fry is going to have to finally uh, just come to the conclusion that the guys he keeps playing every day for whatever reason are not going to do it and do something drastic. He can move Moreland into third. He can put a hatcher in right field. He could get a little a little uh, more speed in his outfield, more a, a bat on his infield. I'd certainly play Spire. He at least is a a long ball threat can hit a couple of home runs. Well, you've got to do something, Harry, and I don't think the shakeup is too far away. Here's Jack Clark, George Frazier, the new pitcher. Chris Meyer at shortstop. Frazier, six and five this year, 4.47 ERA, making his 35th appearance. 52 and a third innings, 51 hits, 33 walks, 32 strikeouts. Sorensen pitched two perfect innings. Unfortunately, the score was eight to nothing when he came in. Jack Clark 
Hodge has driven in a run. Because <laughs> of his two Peoria Chief fans are here. Phil Picorni, a Cardinal fan. And Jeff Ebner, a Cub fan. The loser has to drive home tonight. I hope Jeff Ebner is a good driver. <laughs> There's a smash foul. Eight to nothing, a one hitter by John Tudor. Hopefully they kept the Budweiser's to a minimum, especially Jeff Ebner. Dang here from LaGrange. This was supposed to be a three-game series. Two games fell victim to the strike. There's a curve a little low. Boy, there are a lot of people here from Albuquerque, New Mexico. The Cardinals hit the road after the game. They go to Philadelphia. And the Cubs go to New York, where they play tomorrow. Three. Jim Hawes from Canaryville. That's in the shadow of Sox Park. Three and two pitch. He walked it and ball four. Bill Nancy Tara and Ryan McGarry are here from Chicago. He says, I am a policeman, a Cub fan, and a Bud man. <coughs> Runner at first, Van Slyke is one out of three. Had a swing and he missed. A good sinker. Van Slyke with seven homers. Is seven being hit in the first inning tonight? There's a drive, but it's going to go foul. The Youngs are here from Paris, Illinois. And the Duranics are here from Bensonville. Illinois. Cardinals would like to see Andy Van Slyke pull the ball more. Early in his career, he was hitting a lot to left center field and down the left field line. They decided with his strength, they'd like to see some home runs out of him. Perhaps get another home run man to back up Jack Clark. And he did pull the ball into the right field corner for the home run in the first inning. He hit a 3 nothing pitch. And he hit it a mile. One and two the count. Ron Meredith up and throwing in the Cubs bullpen. Base hit to right. The runner stops at second base. The throw comes in to Chris Spire. The Wilshires are here. Third A base. big group. Terry Pendleton. From Peru, Indiana. So runners are at first and second, nobody out. And Terry Pendleton, who homered in the first inning, will be the hitter. Imagine, Steve, in that last series we play here, the last three games of the season, they're going to have to play double headers on the first two days. Because the Cardinals certainly are going to be in the picture. Here's the strike call. Well, they're looking for off days now, Harry. They nixed August 19th. Now they're looking at September 9th. They're trying to figure out what off days the teams have in common. Then they'll fly the Cubs in here to try to get the games in. The players won't get paid if they don't play those games. The Players Association wants them rescheduled, so we'll just have to wait and see what happens later on. There's 
a strike call to Pendleton. That evens a count of the ball on a strike. Eight to nothing. The Cardinals are leading. to hit but he fouled it off Whitey Herzog readily admits that he thinks in the last two games against Philadelphia the Cardinals were distracted by the strike issue he feels that they wanted to hang on so badly and wind up in first place by the time the strike came that they just didn't play good baseball that's not in evidence here tonight one and two the count to foul. The Ensigns are here from Mah Mahomet, Illinois, which is near Champaign. Runners at first and second. Nobody out. A tough night here for Cub fans. One and two the count. Maybe a triple play. Would hit the runner and bounces away. He will advance. They had a triple play, and Leon Durham. Let's see now. They got two men standing at second base. They may still get a triple play. They passed each other. It will have to be. They're going to complete a triple play right here. The inning is over. A line drive to Durham, who threw the second. To double up, Clark. Then Van Slyke was in between second and first. He returned to first base. He would have been out, but the throw by Spire hit him on the shoulder, rolled to the wall. Then I don't know what in the world happened because they were passing each other on the bases. We'll show it to you again following this message. Because of regulation. Let's take a look at the triple play once again. A line drive off the bat of Pendleton that Leon Durham catches in the air. Now he fires to shortstop for one. Back to first. It hits off the helmet right there. Now it gets confusing. Andy Van Slyke at this point has passed up the base runner. You can see he passes up Jack Clark. That's when they started a rundown. Now watch it one more time. They tag him out. There's the triple play. And the award for this play will be a donation to Cubs Care in the Cub infield's name. Harry Carey back in St. Louis. They're still buzzing about a, a bizarre triple play. I don't know why uh, work Clark came into the picture because he, he would have been retired on the double play. <laughs> I think they said that Spire was off the bag on the throw to him, Harry. There's Spire. Well, then where's the third outcome for passing the runner? Well, they, they, had to tag, they had to tag out Clark for the third out. The last time the Cubs made a triple play, it was against Pittsburgh in 83. It went from Ron Say to Ryan Sandberg to Bill Buck there. Rick Roden hit into it. Last time the Cardinals were involved in a triple play was 1980 against Montreal. Matt Kalini also calls attention to the fact that the last time a one hitter was pitched by the opposition against the Cubs, it was by Dwight Gooden. And Keith Moreland got the hit. That was last September. That triple play took 28 seconds. There's a ground ball foul by Spire. It started off like a simple triple play, 3-6-3. Three, three. But Spire's throw hit, hit the runner on the shoulder, Van Slyke. That's when the confusion set in as they retrieved the ball 
of the grandstand wall. Hot smash. Great play. Long throw. He's out. What a play by Terry Pendleton. You're not going to see too many better than this one. And watch how quickly he gets up, writes himself, and throws the ball. It's a rocket down the line. Pendleton is right there. Now watch the pivot. Boy, what a beautiful play. Outstanding. You know, Tudor started the game retiring the first 11 he faced. Then he walked Matthews. That was the first base runner. He got the next man out. With one out in the fifth, Durham single. He has since retired 12 men in a row. Dernier hits a ground ball. Ozzie Smith, two out. 13 in a row. We're going to show you the triple play out here. Pendleton hits the line drive. Durham makes a good decision here. He knows he can always get Van Slyke, but the throw was bad. They ruled Spire was not on the bag. So now, you see, Van Slyke has already gone past Clark. Now Clark starts to run, and Spire gives it to the Penguin, who throws to Sandberg, who tags him out. Here's Sandberg. Got around late, fouled it into the stand. Boy, I bet Tudor would love to have that pitch back. He had fanned Durham the previous time and struck him out the next time. And had him set up for a strikeout when Durham got the hit. The count was two and two. And they got the breaking ball a little bit too far inside. <laughs> there you see him. 31-year-old left-hander. Slider a little bit inside. He's going for his seventh straight perfect inning out of nine. And a drive way back, it might be. Coleman at the wall, the game is over. Sandberg gave it a shot, but Coleman went to the wall. One, two, three. In seven of the nine innings, he retired the side in order. Over the last four innings, he retired the side in order. Over the first three innings, he retired the side in order. A beautifully pitched one hitter. We'll be back with the totals in a moment. Steve Stone, Harry Carey, back at Bush Memorial Stadium, where the St. Louis Cardinals just beat the heck out of the Cubs. That's about all you can say. I mean, they just uh, uh, really embarrassed them. A little too much John Tudor tonight, and the top of the order for the Cardinals was just unstoppable for Scott Sanderson. He had a lot of trouble with him. He had a tough start tonight. Scott just wasn't throwing the ball very well. But when John Tudor throws a one-hitter at you, there's not much you can do to stop this club. I've said this many times. Nobody's ever discovered a way to win a game without scoring a run. And tonight, the Cardinals were at their best. They showed you speed. They showed you very good defense behind Tudor. Tudor's now won four in a row and 13 of his last 14 decisions. And the Cardinals look like they're poised and ready to make a run at the man. I think we ought to see the only hit of the ball game. Leon Durham on a 2-2 count takes a breaking ball that was a little too much inside. Just past the outstretched glove of Jack Clark, and that was it. He had pitched a one-hitter earlier in his career in the American League. Now he has proven that there's no difference. He's pitched one in the National League. Well, we're going to have to see what's going to happen tomorrow night, but they face a red-hot Mets ball club, Harry, and I'll see you in New York. All right, see you then. Here are the totals. Eight runs, ten hits. No errors for the Cardinals. The winner, John Tudor, 14-8. and eight. No runs, one hit, one error for the Cubs. The loser, <laughs> Scott Sanderson, he's now 5-5. Five and five. The game-winning RBI belongs to Willie McGee. He's no stranger at this. It was the 12th time this year that he's been credited with the game-winning RBI. 
the Cardinals do not gain any ground because the New York Mets also have won their ball game, and it's only a half a game separates the first two teams in the National League with the Mets being in first place. Well, with Steve Stone, this is Harry Carey, wishing you all a very pleasant good evening from Bush Memorial Stadium, where some 40,000 saw the St. Louis Cardinals blank the Chicago Cubs by the score of eight to nothing. Win or lose, I'm a Cub fan, and I'm a Bud man, and I hope you are too. So long, everybody.